Google if you sell my loves, my happy birthday. So time for another, and then I remember the magic. I will link the whole playlist of all the videos down below. Um, but today we are going to talk about a gentleman's guide to love and murder, and they say it like that when they when they introduce it. I've seen this play twice. I saw it the first time when they were touring it, and then the second time um, once it had made permanent residence in New York. And the whole story about that is really fun, um, and I will tell you that in a second. But the reason actually I um, remembered to sit down and film this for you guys is um, there's a sweet girl who I've started following on Instagram. I think her name is Pizza Not Prada. I'll find it and I'll link her Instagram down below. But she just recently went to it and we like had a whole conversation about how much we both really love the show. And so it reminded me to sit down and film one of these little videos for you guys. Um, so when I first watched it in San Diego, I knew that it was touring. But I didn't actually know at the time. Um, I knew when, once I saw it the second time, I understood they like explained it obviously. Um, that what happens is that for them to decide who the cast was going to be for the permanent show on Broadway, they did. That was the way they sort of like um, interviewed people. Like obviously, for you to be in the touring cast, you still would have had to, to audition and stuff. But it was sort of like an in real time, like how do you do with a live audience type thing. And so that's how they. Um, they auditioned and sort of trimmed down who would be on Broadway. So by the time it got to Broadway, um, only one, I think, of the characters stayed. Um, the other characters, as far as I can remember from like remembering one show to the other, um, the rest of them were not the cast that I saw in San Diego. So um, the guy that they did keep though, he is phenomenal and so worth it. So basically the story goes that this one guy um, has always lived sort of quite a hard life. Um, he and his mother, he lived with his mother, they never had a lot of money. By the, when she, the play opens with, with her death, so we're sort of like in the 1800s, early 1900s I want to say, um, like horse and buggy, big dresses, that kind of thing. Um, so me and my conception of history, I apologize to all the historians out there, but I'm just like trying to frame it. I'm like thinking of Heritage Park, so all my Alberta girls know what I'm talking about. And guys, <laughs> um, so it opens with that. He finds out that he's actually in line for um, a title, and that title would bring about obviously stature, but it would also bring about money. And so the money for him to survive, and then the stature, because there's this girl that he really likes, and she's trying to marry up, and so there's all that. Um, so the only guy, the only actor that I told you that stayed the same is the one guy that plays the entire family. So I told you there are eight, nine or eight. I want to say nine, but it could be eight. Um, people in line, women, men, young and old, and this one guy plays them all and he plays it so well. It is ridiculous. Um, I don't want to give away too much because it's so cool, but if you go see it, make sure to notice how well he transforms. Um, in the mannerisms, in the outfit, like everything. He's just amazing. They don't do a lot of prosthetic work, like obviously there's some when he's supposed to be like an old lady <laughs> versus when he's supposed to be like a younger guy. There's some prosthetics, but um, mainly in the outfits, nothing much going on on his face um, and wigs and stuff, but he is so, so, so good. Um, and every time I describe this to someone, they're like, wait, so he's killing all these people? Like, how are you, can, how is this a comedy? I'm like, because it is a comedy. Um, it's just, it's done really well. It's really funny. Again, the sets to me just blow my mind. There's sort of like a mini set within a set. So in the background, there's like what looks like a little stage with curtains and they have scenes in there, but there's also a part of the stage that comes out. So the chorus will come out there. There's times when that those two areas will interact. To me, when you can get the stage to be really interactive and cool, it just adds another dimension to it. Um, so that is phenomenal. The acting is phenomenal. This was actually the play, do you guys remember in my first, um, and then I remember the magic, I think it was the Titanium, that dance show. I told you that there was a day I left the theater and I started typing this little memo to myself about how I was inspired and I felt that magic. It was that night because that day had been so chaotic so hectic, such a like, not a good day. And then I left feeling just so uplifted. So this was actually the show that prompted this whole feeling um, of being encapsulated in the magic. So um, I, it needed to be filmed. So thank you. I don't actually know your name. So let me know what your name is down below because I don't actually think I know it. Um, but thank you for reminding me how much I love this show and how much I needed to share it with you guys. So let me know if you guys have seen it and your experiences with it. Um, if you're planning to see it, any of that kind of good stuff or any good theater you've watched recently. Um, that is it for me today. I'm going to do some points of positivity and then I will be done. So my first point of positivity is Sons of Anarchy. I am still watching and still loving it and it's still giving me life. 
<laughs> if any of you guys have gotten into it recently, let me know. I'm still, you know, sort of in the middle of the season, but um, I expect that once exams are over, I'm there's like this will all be done in a day. Um, the only reason I have not watched as like have power watched it is because I've had to sleep and study, and that's just getting in the way of good TV watching. What is this? So my second point of positivity is chatting with the bestie, um, not on the phone unfortunately, but sort of through text and what have you. It was only like 15-20 minutes, but it's always really fun to get to catch up with people you love. And then my third point of positivity in that same vein is getting to talk to my amazing Noel. Um, I get to wake up to her voice memos now. She's gone back to work and I'm on like the schedule here. So I wake up to her memos and like by the time I'm going to sleep, she, yeah, it it's just fun <laughs> to be able to talk to her. I'll link her channel. Do I have a lipstick on my teeth? No, okay, we're okay. This lipstick does not want to stay on my lips. It likes my teeth. I will link Noel's channel down below, but that is it for me today. I want to send you ever so much love. Thank you as always for being here, and I can never leave you without reminding you that life is just too short to wear boring lipstick. Bye, guys.